15 years ago, that earnest earworm hit number one in 10 countries, catapulting One Republic from high school mates to the history books. Ryan Tedder's soaring vocals and catchy hooks have become a One Republic trademark, sending him and his band on sold-out tours to every corner of the globe. Budapest, Latvia, Prague, Paris, Spain, Italy, Japan. This is like my passport um, photo collection, kind of. Some people collect stamps or postcards and whatever, and um, bands tend to get tattoos. I can see a space on your forearm right there for Australia. There's gonna be definitely yeah. some ink, and I'm not gonna be, it's not gonna be generic. It's not gonna be like friggin' kangaroo <laughs> hopping across my arm, which I can't imagine how many Americans have gotten that tattoo. We might have to hold him to that, as One Republic has some exclusive news to share. You're coming to Australia soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One yeah. Republic yes. is gonna tour, tell us. Very excited. We were gonna do it earlier, but you know, there was a pandemic. Um, so, oh yeah. <laughs> oh that. yeah, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> we start in Southeast Asia, we work our way down to Australia, New Zealand. I believe early March. I think that's when it is, the, for the first half of March. I know you're a big fan of Australia. What's the oh, first yeah. thing you're gonna do when you hit the ground? It's so touristy and generic, but I always go down to the rocks mm -hmm. uh, with a couple of guys in the band and we have a beer down there. And then um, we're gonna start our food journey uh, in Sydney. I mean, uh, Melbourne has some phenomenal places too. Um, Brisbane, I believe we're playing as well. We might add an additional date. Um, just yeah. for the food? Uh, just for the food, yeah, yeah, just for the food. To celebrate that journey, Ryan's invited me to the LA recording studio where he's penned and produced number one hits, I'm a sucker for you. Grammy winning albums, and the most streamed female song from the noughties. Proving that he can turn anything into a hit. One, two, three, four. Once upon a time in the dreamland, dreamland. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some new chords, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My love and I were walking, walking in the Okay, maybe not anything. So far away. Oh, do it again. His studio is filled with trophies, music memorabilia, and all the tech you'd expect. But what I didn't bank on was a cooking lesson. Okay, I'm a chef. You've liked some of the food that I've cooked. You've eaten my food before. And you just walk up to me and say, chef, impress me. That's one type of artist. Then you have Beyonce's you know, of the world, the Taylor's of the world, who go, all right, so I don't want dairy. I love mushrooms. If it is meat, medium to medium well. So if you send me all the things you're allergic to, right? I, I, chef can't use this, can't use this. I'm allergic to nuts, I'm allergic to dairy. Cool, you just eliminated like 90% of the things that I'm not gonna waste my time on and I'm only gonna do this. Ryan's tried and tested songwriting recipe is even more prevalent in One Republic's latest hit, I Ain't Worried. I got a call just saying, hey, I got a crazy one for you. Could you hop on uh, a Zoom tomorrow or a FaceTime or whatever with, with uh, Tom Cruise and Jerry Bruckheimer? And I was like, okay, Top Gun, cool. Like, yeah, sign me up, what do you want? He's like, man, we've tried everything. We have this scene, it's the beach scene, and we need a record that actually feels like a hit that's custom suited for the film. And then I, I was trying to just explain in, ver in words different songs and in styles of music that I heard for this moment. And he just kept going, yes, yes, this is, he's like, Jerry, isn't this exactly, I said Beach Boy, I said this is what I want. <laughs> and so I didn't find out till after we locked the song to the, to the picture that they had auditioned 30 other songs. We were the 31st of 30 songs. That would have intimidated me had I known that. Um, the next morning I woke up and immediately I had, I had the whistle melody in my head, which is how the song starts now. Before you know it, you're in the, I ain't worried about it right now. I wish I could say it was like, I knew this was gonna be a smash. I knew Top Gun was gonna be the biggest movie ever. Like, I, you know, in, retros in retrospect, it's like, oh, that was a good move. Um, it was a Thursday. The stakes were just higher because I'm like, I'm not letting Tom Cruise down. Do you sing along with your own song in the middle there? I just stand up and just loudly, yeah. I'm like, it's, it's me! me. <laughs> Everybody! <laughs> Please, please. I ain't worried about it. 
You have written for literally everybody and with everybody, Adele, Beyonce, Miley Cyrus, Ed Sheeran, Taylor Swift. How do you separate the way you write a song with, say, Adele and Beyonce and Taylor Swift? Wildly different. Um, you know, when, when uh, Miley is a great example, I was talking about her yesterday, um, she is, always has a raw nerve. If you're in a session with her, she will, in the first 30 minutes, say something that is the song title and that becomes the entire, she literally gives you all the inspiration in the world, it's just like pouring out of her. You know, Taylor does, t Taylor, I don't know where the magic for her comes from, but it's endless. It just literally, and here's an idea, and here's an idea, and here's an idea. And uh, us guys like me are just running around going, okay, okay, like, <laughs> you know, that's songwriting. You have to have the source material, and ideally it needs to be simple, but profound. So like Little Nas X, that's what I want, you know? I asked him why, I said, what do you, what do you really want? What are we trying to say here? What do you, what do you want? You know, and he kind of, and me and the other writers, and he said, I just want what everybody wants. I want someone to love me. And I was like, I want someone to love me. I need who needs me. The names in your phones yeah. must be insane. Do yeah. you look at it sometimes and just think, how did I get to this point? I've had those moments. I've had those moments where when I was producing U2, that was probably my first big pinch me moment. Um, I worshiped you too growing up. I worship P Peter Gabriel. I got to work with him. Like I've had a lot of those pinch me moments, you know, where you you look at your text thread and you go in the same screen, yeah, whether it's McCartney, Bono, blah blah blah, all somehow texted me today and it's like the weirdest thing in the world. It is absolutely weird until it isn't because you just keep doing it. I learned my lesson, come on, blessings up to the rising sun. Run, run, run. Yeah, that uh, interview should have come with a noise pollution warning. <laughs> and I should explain too, Ryan said to me that sometimes he gets writer's block and he doesn't finish a song. And I said, well, I once wrote a song when I was eight and I sang it to him and I got it, an accompaniment to it. So I now have a Ryan Jetta song of my very I'm own. I'm glad we got that context. <laughs> <laughs> Head to our website for more details on One Republic's huge 2023 Aussie tour. And for Lisa's tour, uh, <laughs> follow her on socials. Check out the website. Well.